Hello, my friends. It's an unreasonable hour to be doing a broadcast. I'll be the first one to admit it. I was going to do it earlier at 9 o'clock. I thought, well, maybe 10. And then, I don't know. I, I took a little nap. That was a mistake. Then Annabelle came home, and, and now we're catching up. And, uh, well, here it is, 12-12. I picked a spiritual moment. Don't you think so? 12-12. Uh, so, anyway, here we are, 12-12. You, you guys won't be seeing this at 12-12. You'll be watching this tomorrow. But there are 14 of you right now that are alive with me, and it's good to see you. So I, I, I can't believe, I mean, I shouldn't say I can't believe, it's not a great confession, but it's hard to imagine how the United States policy people could make such stupid policies. Did you hear, you know, Putin went in and raided Georgia and took it over at the moment, like it was a 2000... Oh, when was it, eight or something, when uh, when our, our geniuses here in the United States said that we wanted to put Georgia, uh, bring it into like the NATO and and uh, pack it in with Ukraine and bring it to NATO. Every time we say we want to bring a country into NATO, uh, which means that you have an agreement with each other to go to war with anyone who attacks any one of you. And it's all about Russia. Basically, it's an agreement if Russia touches Italy, if Russia touches Germany, if Russia now touches Sweden or France or Spain or England, they all go to war together as one. That's the disincentive. It's, a, it's the Cold War mentality. It's, it's fighting the wrong war from an old war. So anyways, they were going to bring Ukraine in and, and Putin went in on Ukraine. Why? Because he does not want to have nuclear arsenals on his border any more than we want to have China put a nuclear weapon in Cuba. Anyway, the point is, what does Blinken do? These, I don't want to speak evil of a ruler of thy people. At the same time, I find myself at a loss for words. How do you describe the ignorance of a, of a, of a, of a, of a this is, I'm just going to say, catastrophic consequences happen when elections maybe aren't won legitimately. Ever think about that? Ever think about that? Would the Kennedy assassination have happened if Mayor Daley and the Democrats hadn't stolen the election in Chicago, in Illinois, so that the Electoral College that was in a, a tie was broken up by Illinois, so it was primarily the Daley, kind of like we know the union, like the crime machine, and remember, the crime, the crime machine felt that Kennedy owed him something. Instead of cutting him a break, RFK, John's brother, went after him with a vengeance, which is why they, the theory is that it was the CIA and organized crime that were both that both had incentives for taking Kennedy out. But would Kennedy have been assassinated if he wasn't elected? What if Nixon had been president? Would there have been a Cuban Missile Crisis if Nixon had been elected? Maybe not, because Khrushchev already met with Nixon, debated with him. He knew Tricky Dick. He knew he was a sharp young politician, eager to make a name for himself, but he saw John Kennedy as weak. I don't want to go into all that. I'm just saying that stolen elections have consequences. For America, it's, it means we have, we have um, bobbleheads running the State Department. So Blinken basically says, we're going to add, we want NATO to include Ukraine, so that if Russia continues to be at war with Ukraine, Russia will be at war with the United States. So that's great, smarty. Why don't we have a nuclear war with Russia? Go ahead, push the issue. You don't have to, but do it. Why not? It's an election year. Maybe you try that to keep in office. You understand how naturally exasperated I get? With much wisdom comes much grief, and that's the, that's the danger of, of having current events understood. A lot of people that just live in la-la land don't even know what you're talking about when you talk to them. And then I'll be honest with you, a lot of Christians are off in conspiracy land that are talking rubbish when there's real stuff like how about the Ukraine joining NATO and joining an agreement that if Russia continues to war with NATO, they're at war with the United States and all of Europe. Oh, that's a good way to trigger a world war. $35 trillion in debt? You really want to trigger that right now? No. That's why this Bible, man. Gotta, whew, gotta read this book. Gotta spend more time in this book. 
This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Just open up to that right now. Surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and say, move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Nevertheless, this kind cometh on up by my prayer. There's going to be, be a prayer and fasting move in the United States. Coming up on our, stick with me here, people. Coming up whether on our, uh, check this out. I got these special glasses. You guys got any of these glasses yet? This is my Eclipse glasses. I can't see any of you. I feel like Fanny Crosby here. I can't even see through this thing. All right. So, anyway, I got these. <coughs> Mercedes got them for the Eclipse. Going through our Ninevehs. Oh, so, but forget Ukraine. Forget Ukraine. By the way, if you put the word podcast in the chat thread, put the white podcast in the chat thread. Would you do that for me? Try it out. It's an experiment. I'm doing something new. Put podcast in the chat thread, if you're on Instagram or on Facebook, and I will send you my own personal link to our five days a week edifying and instructive podcast, giving you what I see as you know pertinent information or stuff that you need to need to know about, and changing the subject now and then for my sanity and for yours, because every day isn't the world isn't the sky isn't falling every day. We are you know Ukraine isn't NATO yet. That's just the genius plan that Blinken has. Kind of like the mastermind of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Oh, I've got a great idea. Let's give up our forward air bases, billion dollar investments, which puts us within a couple of hours of China. Let's give them to China. It's the proof of judgment from God that you have leaders like this. It's, you, don't have to, you don't have to ask if we're under judgment. We are. The question is, are we sufficiently repenting and, and aware it's kind of like the two waves of Babylonian invasion. The first wave took Daniel, and the second wave took everybody. Let's just pray that there's repentance, sufficient resolve, and mobilization of patriots and prayer warriors and prophetic fasting and praying so that we could, we could boom. I'll tell you why. Because the next thing I'm going to tell you, the next thing I'm going to tell you, at 12.19 in the morning, with the evening report, the evening Lance rant. You know, what do you guys think? I was thinking of maybe having a radio show at night. It's like the ride, you know, the like the Paul Revere ride. It by it'd be like the Lance, the Lance ride. It'd be the Lance rant, late night Lance rant. But it'd be like a midnight little show. You can call in, we can talk. If you're driving on the road, you can dial in. Truckers. That's a demographic I don't really have a lot of. But truckers could be hearing our broadcast. Anyway. This is the part that really blew my mind. This is the reason why I, I titled this, Help Me Learn How to Pray. I'm going to tell you the second, the second ingenious piece of global, I could run American foreign policy smarter than these people, and that's scary. Let me tell you the second ingenious little innovation of the State Department. Ooh, it's like flying a LGBTQ trans flag. On every embassy in the middle flipping east, you ding dongs. Think the Muslims want that? Hey, they. All right, we go back. Back, Lance, back. So now, the geniuses in the Democrat Party are telling Israel maybe a two state solution is good. You know those terrorists that were cutting off people's heads and playing with them like soccer balls that are still raping people that have American hostages right now. You know those terrorists, maybe ought to invest in them. Give them their own, you know, give them the official land, give them an embassy, have them live next door to you. Officially recognize their government, two-state solution. This is Biden, Schumer, Harris, all of them under the cloud of the Soros demons. And here's what they want to do. They called up the number one rival to Netanyahu while they're in the last stage of getting to the Hamas stronghold. And they're telling him, we want you to run against Netanyahu, interrupt the war, stop fighting, two-state solution. You know why? Because Biden and the Democrats are losing flipping votes from the radicals on the left who want to wipe out Jews. From Israel to the sea, 
Israel to the sea, that whole group that's interrupting their meetings, the Democrat wackos that are out there, and the angry Muslims that are wanting to kill the Jews, yeah, they're there, the pro-Palestinian Gaza crowd, they're losing votes there in Michigan. Can't lose Michigan. So, make peace with ISIS. Sure, sure, they went to your World Trade Center, but come on. Uh, can't you, can't you kind of like get along, go along? I'm losing votes here. So you see how bizarre this is? You think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? Watch this here interview real quick, real quick, just on, on what's happening in the Middle East. Seven and go to another election. Yeah. Is this uh, coordinated with the White House? Oh, this is absolutely coordinated with the White House. Uh, Benny Gantz traveled to the White House uh, just a few weeks He's ago. He's running against uh, Netanyahu. A trip that was explicitly not approved by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And, and because Netanyahu obviously understood what was at stake with this trip, uh, Gantz decided to go anyways. Uh, in addition to meeting with Kamala Harris, he also met with Chuck Schumer. Just a week after he met with Schumer, Schumer called for a new election in Israel from the floor of the Senate. Uh, at the time, oh, Gantz wacko. Oh, Jew. The foreigners shouldn't be the ones deciding when there'd be elections in Israel. And yet, so less than two weeks later, Gantz himself calls for an election and Schumer congratulates him. Uh, so, yes, I, I do believe that, it, that the White House has made it very, very clear that they want Netanyahu out of office. And they've also made clear that Benny Gantz is their preferred candidate, uh, most probably because Netanyahu has been the one standing uh, in the way of the creation of a Palestinian state. While Benny Gantz, uh, when he was defense minister in, in 2022, actually in invited Mahmoud Abbas, the chairman of the Palestinian Authority, to his house inside Israel. Uh, so they think that Gantz would be the one that would accommodate the American desire to see a two-state solution. Yeah, your colleague there at JNS, uh, Carolyn Glick, talked about a four-point plot to overthrow the government. Uh, what's your reaction to her analysis? Well, I think that if you see the moves that the United States are taking, uh, you can understand that, A, they continue to press Israel for uh, the issue of humanitarian aid. Uh, Carolyn Glick reports that uh, ministers and the government are being threatened, uh, that they could be uh, convicted of war crimes uh, for what's going on in Gaza. And, and so they are uh, trying to take control uh, of the war effort in Gaza. They've clearly been trying to slow down the war effort by uh, prohibiting Israel from going into Rafah, which is the last major stronghold there it is. inside the Gaza Strip. They've been gaslighting Netanyahu constantly through the press, uh, and they've been now uh, working with protest movements to, to restart protests inside Israel. So yes, that's right. Americans are going to fund that. Well, and Schumer's Jewish, isn't he? Well, listen, I got I got family in Israel. I've actually thought about doing Aliyah and going to, to Israel so that I could be, you know, an Israeli citizen, dual citizenship. And I'll tell you, I can't understand the Jews in like 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 Soros, who's helping fund that protest, and uh, and and Schumer, who's pressuring and strong arming this situation. It's like, what is wrong with these people? These these Jews are are one little sliver of land in the whole worldwide stinking world. There it is. Wait, let me find it. Let me find it. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, there it is. And they got a little sliver of land there. And you're going to say all oh, little Israel is going to have to give that up so they have a two-state solution. Oh, that's courageous. You know what makes me worry? What if God judges America? Earthquakes over there on the East Coast. We got, earth, we got total eclipses happening going over in eight Ninevehs. The repent and Jonah message. What if God would judge America because America now is, is, is baptizing the world, making it submit to our LGBTQ doctrine, flying the flag with our flag, forcing people to bow their knee to our gods, forcing them to compromise their Christian faith to serve our perversions? Well, at least John Johnson got that one thing off. The Democrats are freaking out. They want to have their flag back. By the way, what is it about a flag? Why is it a hate crime to burn an LGBTQ flag, but it's not a hate crime to burn the American flag? It's freedom of speech. See how twisted this country is? My fear is that God would judge America because now it's meddling with Israel. It's meddling directly. This is the country, I didn't think we did this. We interfere with other countries' freedoms. We interfere with their rights. You know why? 
If you have ignoramuses running a strong, powerful nation, you have an ignorant nation influencing the world. Cannot have that. Americans, I'm saying, how do we pray? By sense, and I'm just saying this, is it possible? This sounds counterintuitive. But can we separate ourselves from our government? Can we plead for mercy on America and direct the judgment, kind of like the lightning strike that hit the Statue of Liberty? Can we direct the judgment on the enemies of God by us repenting on behalf of our nation? Us repenting for the sins of our nation, not just the sins of the radical, crazy, progressive left. We have let this situation happen. On our watch, we let this happen. Perhaps we can repent and pray sincerely. Like right now, I'm a little animated, obviously. But I mean, I'd get myself into a better state of alignment. But perhaps if we could repent and pray and own the sins of this nation, ask God to have mercy on America, but to judge and uproot and to, and to destroy the enemies within the country that are causing it to stumble and fall into, into, well, let's fall into judgment because its leaders are representing us, but they do not represent us. They have taken the helm from us. Now, if we, I'm just saying, do you think it's possible that we could separate America from the government that is making these decisions, repent to God on behalf of America, and ask God to uproot, to judge, to remove the wickedness of rulers that are destabilizing the earth, destabilizing Israel, defiling other countries, and ask God to profoundly forgive and to restore the voice and influence of righteousness in America, lest we, uh, lest we go the way of Jerusalem at the heels of Babylon. How's that? Does that make sense? Uh, or do we just have to kind of like go down with the ship? They get judged, we get judged. Our leaders, stolen elections or not, they got... And listen, the reason why I'm not going to go on the stolen election thing is because half the Congress gets voted in, half the Senate gets voted in. <clears throat> Trust me, half the country, it's not just you know, a little sliver of elites only doing this. They mischievously control the corporations that control the propaganda, the news networks, the universities. Yeah, like demons, they, they play a smart game because they control the influence centers. But half the country, half the country is watching, you know, the people that watch The View, out there, there's a, there, and, and that watch Steve Colbert and Myers and the knuckleheads like Kimmel on the night, you know, Tonight Show circuit, which are all like rabid dogs on, on, the, on the left. There's, a, there's an audience out there. I can't say that it's all, you know, 2,000 mules at the ballot box in Atlanta. They're voting. They're, and America needs to have a, a shift. And I'm telling you, if we don't, this kind of stuff, putting Ukraine into, into NATO in order to provoke a nuclear war confrontation with Russia, Running up our debt to the point of 35, 36 trillion, opening up our borders to 10 to 20 million, and they're not vetted. You need immigration in America. I think we have a 1.8 uh, birth rate, uh, we need, but, but we need 2.5 in order to sustain our population, our employment, our economy. Yeah, the gap has to be filled by immigration, but it's vetted immigration. Not sex traffic, drug cartels, and emptied out insane asylums and prisons in Central America, starting with Venezuela. South America, too. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Well, there's 880 of you out there. I'm sure somebody's in agreement with me here. 12.30 at night in Texas, 1.30 on the East Coast. 11.30 somewhere out there west, maybe 10.30 in California. Do you think it's possible that us meddling to try to divide Israel after an attack from their enemies, Ugh. They're, they're fools. Can we own it and say, like Jeremiah the prophet or something, say, God, forgive our, us our sins and, and uproot 
the rulers that are bringing such judgment and destruction upon your people. And cause your people to rise up like a great movement in this country to reclaim the, uh, the gates of influence, to have gates of sanity, to absolve and dissolve and destroy these pernicious forces that are working from the academy all the way into the entertainment field, into, into, into government. Oh God, cause a shaking and cause a breaking, cause a quaking and cause a remaking of America again by your mighty hand. Forgive us our nation's sins, but Lord, do not let the nation be judged for, this, for the foolish pride of its, of its elites, but rather purge the high places of this den of jackals and begin to repopulate us with the meek that inherit the earth. I think that's a legitimate prayer. I didn't write it out, but it's what I'm thinking. Remember, put the word podcast in the chat thread because that way I'm going to send you a link. You can go to, we do a seven day a week podcast. During the election season, we're going to be really coming up with a lot more stuff because, oh my gosh, every day there's a new thing happening. Going to be in Georgia on the 11th, 12th, and 13th coming up this next week. Going to be, go to the, uh, go to thecouragetour.com. And you'll be able to find out about how to get your seat registered. It's already filling up. I think we wanted to have like 1,700 people. I think we got maybe 1,000, 500, or 2,000. But it's patriots, independent business owners, um, concerned citizens, mama bears. And uh, there's a great um, African-American community reviving in Georgia, as, as we're seeing in Michigan. We're going to be hitting Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin. It's kind of exciting revival in the swing states, revival in the battleground states. Makes sense to me. This is a spiritual warfare. But I've been through my own warfare myself. Do pray for me, please. You have no idea. I can't talk to you on the air about it because it involves many other people. But it's uh, it's real. Warfare is real. But I love you, and I'm so thankful that you're there. All 751 of you that are on this late hour of the night, I don't care if it's 1230 or 130 in the morning, my... Walnow's warriors are awakened. Awakened warriors of Walnow. The awakened warriors of Walnow. I like that kind of like the Walnow warrior thing. Until some Christian nationalist picks up the theme and accuses me of something. Anyway, I love you all. Put podcast in the comments if you're watching on Instagram or on Facebook. And I'm going to send you a link that'll make you think about how you can stay in touch with me. And what do you think about my idea? How do we pray? I say we pray for God to forgive us our sins as a nation. Own our responsibility. This happened on our watch but ask him to uproot the unrighteous, the folly of the foolish, and to plant righteous leaders in high places that America, his legacy, this, is, this belongs to Jesus. It doesn't belong to the devil. He can't have it. This beautiful nation that has done so much good can be restored to greatness again. Donald Trump is now saying, instead of making America great again, he's saying make it glorious again. Because you see, greatness has to do with us. Glory has to do with God. The glory of God. We could be glorious. By the way, Every corporation in China has to have in its mission statement and its corporate documents to the glory of China. They don't have a God, so they glorify their nation. I say we want to make America glorious again. Hallelujah. All right. Do you agree with me? Send me some hearts. Send me some love. Go ahead. Send me some. Where are those hearts? Send those hearts. Oh, send those hearts. I can't jump my finger in front of the hearts. Where are the hearts? Over here. Ah, I feel the love. I feel the love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Send those hearts. Send those loves. Don't forget to write the word podcast down. I'm feeling the old Periscopian days coming back. You know, when we used to walk around late at night and pray and I'd have my meltdowns, but you were there to help me in my angst and in my anxiety. This is the official Lance rant. What do you think of that evening idea? I think of buying radio stations. Well, I can't afford them, but everyone can dream. Maybe getting some radio shows late at night. The late night Lance rant. The late night Lance rant. Woo! <laughs> and it'll be a different energy, kind of finding the hope in the midst of it. Wait a second. The audience is going away. 676. All right, you're leaving. I'm going. If you're going to go, I'm going to go. Love you guys. Catch you later. Bye-bye.